Hi, I'm Tom Hollingsworth. Welcome to Networking Field Day. We're here in Mountain View, California at the offices of VeloCloud. The presentation that you are about to watch features VeloCloud's products and solutions and a group of networking community delegates who are invited to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions in front of a recorded video. If you would like to learn more about this and other exciting topics, including how to become a delegate or a presenter at the event, please go to our website at techfieldday.com. If you'd like to watch more videos about this and other exciting technology topics, please see our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. So very high level, uh, this is covering the various site types. So as you see, there is a gold site, which is full HA. Uh, we have a VeloCloud Edge deployed there. There's a silver site. Uh, there's a legacy site. There's a bronze site. So the way we have defined the gold sites is it's a full HA redundant. Uh, you can have one or two VeloCloud devices. Uh, you can have a silver site, which we typically see as a hybrid site. Uh, there is a legacy site, which has no VeloCloud. The bronze site has internet only. Um, the orchestrator and the, the controller itself can be consumed as a service, or it can be consumed completely on-premise. And I'll be covering some of, the, some of these enter large enterprise deployment options in the upcoming slides. Uh, very close to my heart is the hub cluster. We have a uh, section coming up on the hub cluster as well and how we have built it in a very unique way uh, that no other SD-WAN vendor supports. So again, um, hub clustering, different site types. The key is it is incremental deployment. You cannot rip and replace WAN. We understand that. So how do I insert certain SD-WAN devices to begin with? Maybe not even have hub like Steve presented. And then later down the line, if I have hybrid sites or if I have, I'm trying to scale out my infrastructure, how do I scale as I go? Uh, now, different enterprise deployment options. Um, as you see, a lot of uh, word around what, what VeloCloud supports or not, but this should be pr uh, pretty clear in terms of all the deployment options that exist. So on the very right, you see a very, very traditional legacy deployment, and we support that. So for instance, you have set of branch offices. Every branch has one or two edge devices in HA mode, non-HA mode. All those site types that I described are supported. You can have a controller on-premise. We have disaster recovery for the controllers, and we'll be de demonstrating that. We have orchestrator. There is disaster recovery for orchestrator with single click. We'll be again demonstrating that today. There's a hub that is deployed on premise, which is yet another edge. And all these appliances that you see out here could be physical or virtual form factor. So again, no traffic co going to the cloud. It's all on premise. And we have a large, so one of the SD-WAN vendors, uh, SD-WAN wins that Sanjay described. We have a, a large insurance company deployed this way. Then as you move towards the middle, as the architecture evolves, the management and control is in the cloud, whereas there is still no data plane flowing through the cloud. And we have a huge hospitality chain, which is deployed in this middle fashion. So again, there is a set of branch offices, a hub deployed. The traffic flows. All the data traffic is fully encrypted from the branch to the hub device. And the management and controller is fully multi-tenant and sits in the cloud. And lastly, just to tie everything together, if you have traffic which is going to the cloud, which is AWS, or you have Office 365, you can use one of our cloud gateways and send select traffic to it. So again, it starts from all on-premise. You can have management control in the cloud, and you can have data plane in the cloud. So very, very flexible in terms of how the SD-WAN nodes are there. And we have seen wins pretty much in all of these different areas. In terms of the security itself, uh, I have taken an example here of a VPN architecture one, legacy VPN one, legacy VPN two, and then what is expected from SD-WAN. So as you see, uh, if we consider one of the VPN architectures that is predominant, uh, uh, I don't know, want to name vendors here, but let's say PKI is very well known. Right? PKI support should exist from the get-go. But if we move towards more of a key server-based architecture that exists today, there is no PKI support. Or if it is, it's very complex to deploy. On the other hand, I would say uh, pre-shared key historically has been very, very simple to roll out, but it has been insecure. PKI has been very complex, but it has been secure. So SD-WAN needs to bring the best of both worlds together. How do I make PKI really, really simple to deploy? And, uh, and as you see, we have this whole integrated CA, which is built into the orchestrator itself. We interoperate with third-party CAs, but at the same time, we have several deployments which use uh, integrated CA. So you don't need to tie it with a Microsoft CA or an iOS CA server. Uh, secure onboarding, 
uh, goes without saying, Steve presented the two uh, mechanisms for uh, secure onboarding. Uh, in one of the legacy VPN, it exists. In VPN2 uh, architecture, it doesn't exist, which is more about, again, the key server. And we want to make sure with SD-WAN, it should exist. What we do like from the legacy 2 is the centralized orchestrator. There's a key server in that VPN2 architecture <coughs> which doesn't exist in VPN1, which makes sure that there is a key provisioning done cent is all centralized. So SD-WAN needs to bring that orchestration in so that the centralized key architecture is in there. And that happens through our orchestrator. So again, here it's trying to show how there are certain aspects of a legacy VPN architecture one, which were really good. There are certain aspects, like for instance, uh, centralized provisioning from a VPN architecture two, which is good. And SD-WAN should bring best of both uh, from a security perspective. Integrated CA is something we covered. And tunnel integrated integrity check, Again, the two architectures don't support it today. If a site is compromised, we want to make sure the centralized orchestrator has a view that which site was compromised. It automatically sends down that message to the remaining sites to break the tunnels down. So the CRLs can be auto-provisioned. And then the tunnel integrity can be broken down. This is all of the automation that SD-WAN should bring in. So again, combining best of the wo both worlds and plus adding new functionality to SD-WAN is how we define as secure SD-WAN. Plus, we want to make sure this is done for both on-premise and for cloud. Because you want to make sure that not only this is done for from a branch to hub, even if I tr I'm sending some traffic from the branch to the, to the IAS apps, everything is PKI. SD-WAN routing, uh, we have done this in a very unique way. We have a very uh, a good demo coming up right after this. Uh, so as you see here, on the hub side or on the brand side, BGP or OSPF can be enabled. We have support for both of these protocols. We automatically learn from the layer 3 switch. All these routes are learned by the hub or are learned by the SD-WAN site. It is all that information is sent to a centralized controller. It, the centralized controller acts like a route reflector, and it programs the remaining SD-WAN site. Now, routing has been there forever, but we have taken a unique approach there. Although we have gone standard-based routing on the LAN side, but at the same time, we have given an enterprise-wide view. So it's an enterprise-wide view. You don't need to go on a side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side basis to look up the routing tables. You can, because what is really important from a WAN perspective is how do I reach this particular destination? And if I want to manipulate that route, I want an enterprise-wide view of all the routes that were learned. So it's an enterprise-wide visibility and it is an enterprise wide control with a single click and we are going to demonstrate this to you guys uh, in real time today we can configure whether it's a full overlay or a partial overlay so for instance maybe i have a legacy site down there and maybe i want to program all of the silver sites to say hey all the legacy site traffic please do not send it over the overlay send it direct on the mpls how do i use a single click and make sure all the silver sites can be programmed without even touching the layer 3 switch. So we are taking the SD-WAN to the next level, wherein we understand the layer 3 routes. We can program, and we can program it to an extent that you don't even need to touch your on-site layer 3 switches. We'll program these switches for you. All you got to tell us is whether you want to use the overlay or not. And I'll demonstrate this with an example. So like I spoke about, we, we call this concept as overlay flow control. So overlay flow control is this Massive routing table that we build based on the routes learned. It's the controller-based routing table. It shows you all the sites. I can pick a destination. So for instance, in this case, I can pick, hey, for legacy site 172.128.00, please don't send the traffic to me, because I want you to send the traffic from the layer 3 switch out to the MPLS network directly. So as you see, the, the subnet comes up here. Before, the, the preferred VPN exit is a concept where, where does the VeloCloud intelligence end? Where does the VeloCloud overlay end? So when I say hub is on the top, all the traffic for that legacy site, for that destination, goes from the layer 3, it goes to the edge, and it takes MPLS or internet path, goes down to the hub, and from the hub, it goes down to the legacy site. Now, I want to change this behavior. This might work for some customers. Some customers might say, you know what? Across all my sites, I want to make sure that this subnet is reachable directly via MPLS. 
I don't want it to handle via the overlay. And there are several use cases for this. One of our customers said, hey, you know, for all these legacy, why break the full mesh? It's already meshed into the MPLS domain. With a single click, program all the sites. I don't want to go on a site by site by site basis and configure this routing. And that's how we, uh, we did this whole automation. So as you see in this case, we just toggle this up. So there was a toggle button here. We moved the router non-overlay path on the top. We moved the hub below. And as soon as we do this, you will see that the offload traffic for that site, for the legacy site, takes the MPLS part directly. Now I cannot emphasize this enough, that this is programmed for all the sites. So if you have thousands of sites in your network, you don't need to touch these layer three switches. All these sites can get programmed. We know the cost of the network. This works both for BGP and OSPF. We have different tricks for both of these. But we are really merged into the routing table. We are not just relying on the routes. We are relying on things like link state database to make sure that these decisions are accurate. I'm losing where uh, Velo Cloud branded equipment running your software you know, begins versus my legacy stuff that's running whatever operating system uh, is. You're saying I can program your switches. What, what are you saying here? So, for instance, in this case... Well, let's back up a second, just to qualify. Do you just mean you'll send me routes with BGP or OSPF out of your cloud based on the policy that you've computed in the cloud? That is right. So once we learned the routes, right, one of the questions is, we learned this legacy route. Now, the, the, the problem in past has been that I want to reach this legacy site. To reach this legacy site, I don't want you to configure every single brand, brand site individually to change the routing decision. We know what the cost is to reach the network. If your preference is that this network should not go over the overlay and that happens in a transition phase, some traffic, offload traffic. You know what, I want to send all, your, all the traffic to your overlay, but maybe some select traffic needs to go directly to the legacy site, right? So we can pick that subnet. We can just toggle this. We can say, this subnet needs to be reached directly via the router. All the silver sites, assume there are hundreds of silver sites, gets this policy because it's more about how do I reach this destination. They get programmed. The L3 switch gets programmed. And then when the traffic comes in, the L3 doesn't even send the traffic to us. It goes directly offloaded onto the MPLS part. So it's more about SD-WAN programmability. And again, the programming mechanism is BGP or OSPF. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Now you've left me wondering about application or flow awareness of which path to take and how that interacts with routing. That's right. So what, what this will help you with is programming uh, use cases like legacy sites, which is more network aware. Once the traffic hits our overlay, all the rest traffic is all going to be app aware. So for instance, a policy could be Skype RTP is low priority, but my enterprise RTP voice is high priority. We can even go granular in terms of the apps like Skype, RTP, voice, video, all these appear as different applications for us. So we can go granular in terms of the apps. For all the overlay traffic, we can bring the app intelligence. But obviously for the non-overlay traffic, which goes to the legacy site, it's going to be subnet aware. But the key use case there is programmability, no touch to the L3, how do I program all these sites to offload select traffic? And this happens in real world all day long. People do not want to send all their traffic to the overlay right away. They have migration traffic. How do I migrate? How do I migrate to SD-WAN? So that, those are the kind of use cases uh, why we build this kind of technology. A somewhat related question, just to, uh, to, uh, topology support question is, do you, does your solution support partial mesh topologies, right? So I yes. frequently have customers that, you know, all within one metro area, they may yep. have shortcut links, you know, gigabit fibers between some subsets of sites, but not a full mesh of, of that. Can, Absolutely. Okay, so you can handle, you know, say full mesh MPLS, internet which is effectively full mesh, yep. and then also some discrete point-to-point -point links. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. In fact, we have this whole concept of regional WAN, where the WAN can be regionalized both in the SP and the enterprise domain. So uh, we also have support for dynamic branch to branch. So for instance, if two branches need to build uh, talk to each other, we can build tunnels, and that can be all policy driven. So a set of branches in a profile can build dynamic branch to branch, turn it down when not needed, build it as necessary. And it keeps the mesh in place while doing that. Right, okay. That but, you, but you understand that, it, that yep. in some cases there may be a link that is not 
one interface may not necessarily be able to reach all other interfaces. Yes. Because it could be a point-to-point -point yep. link or a point-to-point yep. link. Yeah, okay. that is supported.